It's time for the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. Wishing you and yours a safe and happy holiday season. On this edition of the Kirby on Sports Podcast, we break down two games in depth, the Chargers versus the Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens versus Aaron Rodgers in the Green Bay Packers. All that and so much more on this extended week, so to speak, due to COVID protocols, on the Kirby on Sports Podcast. It's all coming your way next. Shout out, Q. Shout out, Q. Shout out. you connected this is dave johnson voice of the washington wizards you have connected to the right place because you are listening to my man josh kirby on sports podcast coming to you from the trumbull insurance agency virtual studio turn your stress and anxiety into peace and security with trumbull insurance contact patrick van kemper today for all your insurance needs at 540-532-0622 for our sponsors, Rieger Building Services, PM Plus Reserves, Shenandoah Primitives, and Mark Francis with Icon Real Estate. This is a special holiday edition of the Kirby on Sports podcast. Just under a couple days left until Christmas, where we get to drink hot chocolate, open a bunch of presents, have a great time, and nonetheless, watch the All Madden documentary if you're interested in that and football to come right after that. I'm joined, the three-man booth by the weapon Dan Dembski and the Swiss Army Knife, Carlos Martinez. Gentlemen, happy holidays. Yeah, same to you, man. It's uh, another year has just flown by in these times in which we are living. But no, in all seriousness, uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun this past year with you all. Can't wait to see what we do in the year 2022. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, hey. Uh, hey, Carlos is in the festive spirit today. A little bit. Just, a tad. <laughs> just immediately uh, a little bit. Just a tad, just a little bit. I'll make a couple Christmas references here and there. The audacity. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen, let's get into the action. Um, two games we're covering in depth. Then the hurry up offense and what to look out for next week as well. But I, I mean, first and foremost, I, I have to say with COVID, there are two games going on that we will not cover that are playing as we are recording this podcast. It's the Washington football team against the Philadelphia Eagles and the Los Angeles Rams against the Seattle Seahawks. So those games are being played right now. We will not cover those. We may or may not give you score updates throughout the time we are recording this. But let's get this show on the road. And let's do it again, Carlos. And the home. I wasn't ready. 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 Countdown. You have to give me a heads up. Okay, countdown. He said ready, Carlos, and then immediately went into it. In three, two, one. And the home of the cheese. We're back. We're back. We're back. What a game that was. We're back. Insufferable insufferable that man Come on. that man right there he's back <laughs> well well I, i'll say this for sure yes the chargers looked pretty good and they were leading for some of the first quarter it, it was a back and forth contest and um one thing e- even before i mention anything that happened in the game that um chargers wide receiver that I don't really know his name. He just uh, on that fourth down play caught that pass and landed 
and what essentially got knocked out. I saw that play. I was slammed like, his head into the turf. That looked pretty bad. I hope yeah, he's Parham right or or Parham. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Parham. Parham. Thank you for that. Parham, but um, yeah. that looked pretty bad the way he ended up, and I'm hoping he's all right. Yeah, I I think he's doing better now. But yeah, he it's always scary when you see a guy strapped to the board and then you know they take the um face mask off and all that stuff. It's never a good uh situation when that happens, regardless of how severe the injury happens to be. So yeah. Prayers, thoughts and prayers up to him. Um that was a it was a very scary moment. There were there was a couple this weekend. Uh there were a couple of um head injuries. Yep. Yeah. Um and just big injuries so. in general. Yeah. 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 So, um, in this game, the Chargers were over the Chiefs 14 to 10 going into halftime. I would say mm. the two hot quarters for the char, uh, the two hot quarters in this game for the Chargers was the second quarter and the fourth quarter for both these teams mm-hmm. before going into overtime with the Chiefs leading the Cardinals in the fourth quarter 15 Chargers. to 14. Chargers, yes. you said Cardinals. No, excuse me, Chiefs in Chargers. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Chiefs in Chargers. Too many C's, you know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and Chiefs, they all like Chargers, yep. and you get jumbled up in there that just blurred out the Cardinals for no apparent reason whatsoever. <laughs> they're not even but, in this conversation. <laughs> yes, they're not in this conversation. Thank you. But um, anyways, Carlos, I, I'd like to get your thoughts because obviously Travis Kelsey looked very, very good for this team. 191 yards, two touchdowns. Patrick Mahomes had three touchdowns. He had that weird interception back Mm. in their own territory that converted into points for this Chargers team. Back and forth, it just looked like a very competitive barn burner up until the end. The Chiefs got their swagger back. Let's go. It's back two games in a row. They have looked great offensively. Obviously, having Travis Kelsey playing at this level is what they need. Um, I mean, the Chargers, the, I, I think the Chargers really brought it out, like brought it out of them that they needed to play this way. Cause obviously they can't, if they would have lost, the Chargers would have taken the lead in the division. And then, of course, they wouldn't be in play for the one seed, which they are right now leading for the one seed. They're the only four loss team in the AFC. Everybody else has five or uh, five or more. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> and to think that they're on what it's a seven game win streak now. And to think that people were kind of starting to write them off like around like <laughs> before the winning streak started, because Don't I mean, let's be honest. Names. They look bad. They they did look bad. Their offense wasn't going, but now it looks like they're starting to get going. Uh, their defense is playing pretty well. Obviously, this was kind of a shootout, but they made the stops when they need when they really needed to, especially on all those fourth downs that, for some reason, the Chargers kept going for instead of you – know, if they would have just made one of those field goals, they would have won this game. They wouldn't have mm-hmm. gone to overtime. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if events still played out the way it played out. But they left points on the board. Um, the Chargers did, and but for the Chiefs, this is good. I mean, again, they're back in the driver's seat. They're that team again, and now they're the fit. They have the best odds to uh, make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, no, they um, they've they've gotten hot here recently, and that's that's what's scary. And this is the time it, it, of year. Smile a little, all right. Show us some respect, okay? Smile. I can't. Smile. I can't. I'm too Carlos, sick of Kansas City. Carlos, I'm too sick of y'all. Carlos, Dan thinks you're insufferable. Deal with it. Well, you know what? Well, I, I, I think you take the title every time, Kirby. <laughs> I mean, come that's on, okay. Kirby. <laughs> hey, th- thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Where's my trophy for that? You get a slap. I'll, uh, I'll have one sent over. Slappy. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, get, we still owe you all those slaps. But, um. Uh... No, Carlos, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. I mean, they're getting hot at the right time, and this is this is the time when, um, you know, this is this is when it counts. The last couple weeks of the season, going into the playoffs, and if you can get on a roll, then man, you're you're tough to beat. So um, that's what makes Kansas City such a scary team, and the fact that they have a history of uh, of getting to the Super Bowl. So you know, that's that's also another thing too. So. Yeah, they're they're one of the most dangerous teams in the NFL right now. I think especially with how we've seen a lot of games play out this year, like you mentioned, um, all five lost teams in the AFC except Kansas City 
which is just crazy. Shows you how crazy the season has been because there's been a lot of upsets this year. Um, and there seems to be one or two upsets each week. So, um, yeah, Kansas City's just been able to weather the storm, and I think that's the biggest thing. And, you know, I, I think some some fuel to their fire was when people like myself and a lot of other more no, notorious, um, you know, s- sports media folks were writing them off. Um, you know, they, they, they use that as a sort of propel this winning streak that they've been on, and they've slowly gotten better each week. Um, and this was the most complete game they played. And let me just say, Travis Kelsey is uh, is a monster. Almost 200 yards receiving the game-winning touchdown on an insane run after the catch. Um, he was he was unstoppable in this football game, and he he made it known that his presence was going to be felt. And the the Chargers had no no answer at all. I mean, it was it was crazy. They literally couldn't stop him. And it's one of those things, it's similar to what we'll talk about with the Ravens going to Mark Andrews. They went to Mark Andrews a bunch. Same thing with Kelsey. I mean, they, they, the Chargers knew that Kelsey was going to get the football and they still, they still couldn't defend him. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where he's, he was better than them straight up top mm-hmm. to bottom. And he, he dominated that defense. And um, yeah, it was, um, it, he put on a clinic and, you know, the, the Chiefs defense made just enough stops. I think we all expected this game to be high scoring and it was because, of the nature of these two teams. So also uh, oh. the chiefs were missing uh, Chris Jones because of co he was in COVID protocol. Right. Uh, but the other factor to this is that they were, I mean, yes, Travis Kelsey, of course was the biggest factor, but also Tyreek Hill got going also. So when yep. you got those two guys going, it's there. The chiefs are a very hard team to beat. Cause then it's the one, two punch. And then obviously Patrick Mahomes, you know, doing Patrick Mahomes stuff. It's uh, it, it just looked, it looked like the chiefs of old, which is good to see that they're, they've done it two weeks in a row against the Raiders. And then in this shootout, now it seems like they got the momentum going. They're going to get Chris Jones back here soon. Um, I, I think the chiefs are in prime position for a Super Bowl run. Yeah. Uh, totally agree. I, I think they've emerged from the pack right now and, you know, we'll never, we'll see what happens in the last couple of weeks, but certainly um, like I said, with the, the parody that we've seen in the NFL this year in general, they're really isn't an elite team this year, but to me, Kansas City is proving that they are. I think if I mean if if they went out, there's no doubt in my mind they are they are the elite team this season. After so many people like myself, I have to point that out, wrote them off um, that they were done and that their reign of not terror, but their reign of success was over and da 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 da. Um, they just they've weathered weathered the storm and and that defense is has made plays when they've had to as well. And, and like you said, they've had an injured and, and COVID-ridden defense as well, a riddled defense rather. So mm-hmm. the fact that they've been able to get through that um, is fantastic. And you just you just have to let that offense eat. Uh, they are – they're insanely good. So if, if, if you can do those things, then, then Kansas City will continue to win, no doubt. What about the Chargers, though? I mean, they seem like a pretty good team. Justin Herbert is – performing at a very high level but yeah. eight and six what do we think about this team after this loss i mean there we know they're a good team it's just the coaching i feel like has been a little off i mean they started out pretty hot they kind of hit a little slump here in the middle they're still a good team it's just mm-hmm. a matter of they the Chargers have to kind of get out of their own way a lot a lot of their losses have been because they're in their own way and it's been that way for the past like few years um, where they are, they're win they they win these or they're winning these games, and then they just the dumb mistakes or bad choices and you know coaching and stuff like to not get to know that you only needed one field goal to win this game, but yet you went for it on fourth down in your own territory multiple times. It just you know it, it's going to cost you when you leave those types of points on the table. I understand the analytics tell you it's best to go for it, but. At some point, you got to be like, "Hey, man, let's let's just get some points here, and let's not like go with nothing." Yeah, that that pretty much nails it. And I was going to say the same thing. Similarly, you know, it's just the fact that they haven't been able to finish in the in the a lot of these games. They've they've been one possession games. A lot of these losses that they've had, and they've just they've they've either been unable to, you know, score a late touchdown or or get a stop or you know. Coaching comes into that as well. They, like Carlos said, they've had a lot of moments this year where you're kind of questioning the decision-making of uh, 
of the head coach as well as like, you know, clock management and other factors as well. So yeah, they're, they're a good football team. I just think they don't do the little things well enough to be a better team. Um, mm-hmm. We've seen that all in a lot this season with, with the chargers. I think they have a very bright future. I mean, Justin Herbert is, is a great quarterback. He's going to have a great future with this franchise. Um, yep. You just have to build around him. That's the other thing too. They're, their offense is interesting in that, you know, they have they have some older players. I mean, um, Eckler is, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. He's he's only 26, but I, I don't know, you know, you never know how long a guy like that's going to be around. Um, a guy like Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, you know, they're they're in their upper 20s now. They're They're getting up there, and as far as, like, receivers are concerned, you know, the – that's kind of the threshold for a lot of receivers uh, careers. So that's the other thing to remember too. If they can just build, continue to build around Justin Herbert, they'll be fine. But yeah, the, this, this just kind of isn't their season. Cause if you think about the AFC, there's so many teams that have the same exact record, eight and six. Um, and uh, a couple of those teams are going to emerge and get and get in the postseason. I just don't see the chargers as one of those teams. They just haven't been consist- consistent enough. Well, right now, happening. the way things stand, the Chargers are in. They're uh, they're the sixth seed. So, like, there's they're, they're still they still control their own destiny here. They just have to win out. But um, I'm not necessarily sure who they still have to play. But like, they have um, they have Houston, Denver, and Vegas. So they could be three and zero in those games. Yeah, Houston could be three and zero. Denver, Vegas. Yeah, that's a. I mean, if they win out, they're good. I feel like they're in. And they can but, you very know, well win out. Yeah, but it's it, and, and it's just the other thing too is like there's been upsets every week. Could they be the victim of an upset here? Um, if they are, that could that could be all she wrote. But yeah, um, definitely Most a, a favorable the Vegas schedule. game that would be the one on because I don't see Houston. You know, Houston's a little Houston's scrappy, a but I don't see them beating them. Uh, Denver's Denver's, got, Denver's a mess. Yeah, Denver's yeah. a mess, especially with Teddy Bridgewater. And that, you know, scary injury that I'm pretty sure that another scary, you know, knockout injury. Um, Yeah, I don't see. So, yeah, Vegas is probably the only team that would probably pull off an upset. But I mean, given how up and down that team is, that they always are up and down. I just don't know if they if if they're really that team that's going to pull it off. My last point uh, that I'd like to point out. Uh, at this current moment in time, boys, with the Kansas City Chiefs seeming to get on a a very, very hot streak going into the end of the season and into the playoffs, other than the Chiefs, do we still think the rest of the AFC is still wide open? Yeah, 100%. Oh, I mean, oh, for sure. For look, sure. Look, look at the Colts right now. The Colts are surging. I mean, they just ended the Patriots streak and we thought the Patriots were hot. And right. They just come off they come off the bye week and then they're like, "We oh, we practiced bad." <laughs> you know? Like we had bad a bad week of practice and it showed in the game. And then it just, you know, it, it's this season is just so I mean, also look, I mean, we're talking about the AFC, not the NFC, but I mean, just it's just been a wild season and with everything that's going on, I mean, yeah, I mean, Kansas City could easily lose the one seed also and drop down. Right. To, they could revert back to not being able to get the ball to Travis Kelsey and um, Tyreek Hill. Like, it's still wide open. It's not wrapped up yet. You know, they only have a one-game advantage over every team so far. Yeah, and it's like this the same thing, like a ton of eight and six teams. I mean, you have five teams right now that are eight and six. From you know, from the fourth seed on down to the ninth or the uh, yeah, I can't count. Hold on, yeah, fourth down to the eighth seed, um, in the AFC side. So yeah, I mean that kind of shows you where things are at. Um, Kansas City obviously is in a good place right now, but look, things could happen. You, you just don't know. Um, New England's nine and five, but they're kind of hanging on, and they, and they play. Um, you know they they play Buffalo, so. That's going to be really. That's going to be a playoff game right there. So, um, and that and that that's another thing too is like coming into the season. I I think a lot of people thought you know Buffalo was going to was going to be a shoe in for the first or second seed. Now they're just claw. They're just trying to stay at the bottom there of that playoff picture. Now they're just trying to stay alive. I think yeah. I think they'll end up in the playoffs, but I I, it's 
you know, it's it's never easy at at this stage when you have when you have several games left. But I mean, think about it. Only one playoff spot has been clinched, and that's the Packers because the Packers. they won the NFC North. Other than yep. that, you know, assuming you know, it that just depends also on the game tonight with Washington Philly. If Philly beats Washington, then Dallas gets you know clinches a playoff spot. But you know, that's a that that's up in the air still. You know. Yeah, no, exactly. They but could still, have think had about it Sunday, it. We're... but Tampa Bay. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about them in the hurry up oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Uh... But I mean, think about it. Like we're uh, we only have about three weeks left in the season, and every playoff spot aside from one has it's open. It, are, are open. Like nothing has been claimed yet. Yeah, it's going to be in- interesting to see how it all unfolds. Um, I, I I kind of think of it as. Um, like maybe Black Friday or something where the everybody's just crowding up to the front of the store that's, getting ready. That's to a good go analogy. In. And the yeah. doors open and then the playoffs just start filling in. Yeah, that's going to be uh, that'll really be two weeks when we'll start to see it. Because I, I really I really do believe there are going to be more teams this year that come down to the end um, and get in the postseason than we've seen in the past. That's just how this year's been. I mean, they're. Outside of now Kansas City, every team seems to be questioned every week as to how legitimate they really are. So especially on the AFC side. Yeah. Like the NFC yeah. side, it seems pretty clear what the well, it's kind of little in chaos now with the Cardinals lost to the Lions, which was which we'll touch on again in the prairie up offense. But with that like little hiccup there, I mean, now L LA's back in play to, you know get the, the fourth seed but right also the cardinals aren't out of it so but we know at least what the top five teams are going to be there it's going to be the packers the bucks the cowboys and the rams um and then we got two other spots that are up in the air so but exactly. the afc is just like a, like anything can like set that thing off and that whole entire bracket will look completely different with one week it's chaos like any week it could look different it's insane chaos right now so absolutely we'll Absolutely. It's insane chaos. Like Dan said, once again, the chiefs 34 and the chargers 28 and also the Rams three, the Seahawks, nothing, the Washington football team, seven and the Eagles, nothing. We'll take a quick break when we return. We'll talk more football right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you about Regroup Building Services. If you're looking to get your home remodeled, any part of your home, bathroom, kitchen, want to get a deck built, anything like that, Regroup Building Services can just about do everything. And take it from me, because they came in and they remodeled my family's kitchen, and they do a great job. So if you're looking for any sort of home remodeling needs, uh, deck work done, anything of that nature, reach out to my guy Sean Hibbard over at Regroup Building Services today. You can check them out on their website, www.regroupbuildingservices.com, where they do the honeydews that your honey don't. Make sure you tell them Josh sent you. All right. Welcome back. I am in the three-man booth with the weapon Dan Dembski and the Swiss Army Knife, Carlos Martinez. The second game on our slate of games we are covering in depth, the Green Bay Packers over the Baltimore Ravens 31-30. to You look at this game and you think, oh, Tyler Huntley, how's he going to do? Aaron Rodgers is going to be having a feast. I'll tell you the key in this game, Tyler Huntley – had a pretty impressive game, 28 for 40, 215, and two touchdowns. And his main target of the day, flipping Mark Andrews. I mean, Mark Andrews, hats off to him. He mm-hmm. is incredible, absolutely incredible. And what what a performance by this Baltimore Ravens. Um, r- r- I mean, even with all the injuries that this Ravens team has, including Lamar Jackson with a bone bruise. Um, so that that was very interesting to see. I thought Lamar was going to start. I was kind of shocked, but Tyler Huntley, was, he did a very good job. <laughs> He's a mobile quarterback. He can get the job done as well. But Mark Andrews, hands down, I'm going to give him the player of the game, even though they lost. It came down to a two-point conversion that 
they just made the wrong play call. We were talking about it earlier before we started, Dan. But the Packers over the Ravens, but the Ravens were so close to making a very big statement win against an NFC powerhouse in Green Bay. Yeah, and and not to mention that their secondary, they only have one starter in their entire secondary that's healthy. They have they have guys from the practice squad. They have guys they've signed off, you know, from street. their free agents, guys that were on the streets last week. Um, so it was it was obvious that Aaron Rodgers was going to have a field day against the secondary, and for a lot of the game he did. Now, the, the couple times that the Ravens were able to stop him, obviously put him in position there when they were down 31-24 where they had a chance to go and tie the game, and we, we know what happened there to end the game. Um, but, yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly. Tyler, Tyler Huntley was impressive, to say the least. Um, what I liked a lot about his performance was his poise in the pocket, um, the, his quick release, which is impressive, and I, I think is something that we've seen Lamar struggle with a lot this year. Um, he's, you know, it seems like Lamar had, had been struggling to, to get rid of the football. Um, so I, I think that he can learn some things from, from watching Tyler Huntley play. Um, but also just his, his ability to read, read the defense was pretty quick, uh, as well. And, and look, Green Bay's, I mean, they've, they, they have an average defense, uh, their, their secondary is kind of hit or miss. Um, and I, I do think Tyler Huntley took advantage of a lot of those missed coverages and, and, uh, let's be honest, some bad assignments too, because Mark Andrews, uh, was really <laughs> tearing up his matchup time and time again. Yeah, they couldn't really fu- had, like he could not cover Mark Andrews at all. Right, and right. Is one of the best is one of the best players on that defense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they they couldn't really find a good matchup for him, and that's kind of the case when you have a tight end who's you know the 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 focal point of an offense like like uh, Andrews was, especially in this game. Um, but yeah, defensively, you know, I, I don't have much to say about the Ravens. You know, Rodgers is Rodgers. He, you know, he only threw eight incomplete passes the entire game, almost threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns, which, again, against this defense, which is severely banged up, um, d- didn't surprise me at all. I knew if the Ravens were going to win this game, they had to follow that formula, get, get one or two stops and, and go out and try to try to um, win the game late, which they had a chance to do. Um also, Huntley Huntley rushed the ball well, seventy three rushing yards and, and two touchdowns on the ground. So he, he kind of was a mini Lamar in a way, and um, all the, albeit a little taller and, and built a little more than Lamar is because Lamar is you know um, lanky. He's he's lanky, yeah. So, um, but yeah, Huntley Huntley impressed me a lot. I think I think that was kind of a job interview for him. Um, if if the Ravens end up parting ways with him at the end of the season or whatever happens in the future. I think there are going to be teams that say, look, this guy, this guy's got some potential. Like we, there's, there is not a lot of tape on the guy, but look at what he did against, you know, uh, uh, NFL, there's not a lot of tape in college. There's right. a good amount of tape where, cause you know, he's from Utah and right. The dude was good. He was good at Utah. Like he was good he at was. the football. <laughs> he was good. Yeah. He was just vastly, vastly underrated, underlooked. And the, you know, he wasn't even invited to the combine, which is crazy, but, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the NFL, I mean, I bet you there's a bunch of, I mean, he's, he's good. Like, I'm not saying he's like elite or anything like that, but like he's, he's he a could good, play like, somewhere. He could sure. play. Yeah. He could play somewhere, start and be a serviceable quarterback. Now I'm not saying you're going to win a Super Bowl with Tyler Huntley, <laughs> but you are going to win some games and you're going right. to, I mean, he's definitely better than, you know, about what 50% of the quarterbacks that are starting right now. I mean, he's better really? than Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> That's for certain, even though he just beat the Titans, but exactly. Yeah. And, you know, uh, as far as the, you know, the Ravens receivers, I, I thought, I thought, um, you know, Mar- Marquise Brown had another pretty good game, but it was really just the Mark Andrews and Tyler Huntley show on offense. And that mm-hmm. was, it's just the Packers had no answer. They couldn't cover him. They couldn't cover him on short routes. They couldn't cover him in deep routes. Um, and that matchup was found early and often in this game. And I think that was the key. I mean, you just, you find when you, when you have a quarterback who doesn't have a lot of NFL experience actually coming in playing just a second start and really his just second appearance in the national football league, because I don't think he came in at all last season. Um, so, you know, he really is just trying to learn things as he goes. 
Um, and when you have a young quarterback, they find that one guy who they kind of go to. And that was the, that was the key for them. Um, they found that matchup and they took advantage of it. Um, I, I, I'm just impressed with the Ravens um, ability. You know, it, it shows how well their, their front office has built this team. There's no reason they should have the record they have right now. They, they should be a losing team. They should, their record should be flipped. You know, they, they should be crumble. Most teams they, crumble when with all the injuries, have injuries, yeah, 100%. Like this. But it, they it should also, be six and eight. They yeah. should be five and nine. But you know, they've they've found a way to overcome those injuries. And the guys who stepped in have played pretty well. Um, you know, I, I think especially their offensive line, their offensive line played a lot better in this game than they have in past weeks. And they they did some reshuffling again this uh during during practice this week. Um, so you saw some of those changes, but you know, that that's another factor here is they've they haven't been able to find the right offensive line group all season and i think um i think that was that was that definitely was hurting lamar i mean he had to you know either run for his life or try to make a decision quickly and uh you know i i think what we saw in this game was huntley was able to he was able to step back there pretty pretty well and the, and the packers didn't blitz a whole lot so that that helped him out a lot too um but yeah, I, I overall was very impressed with the offense. I mean, the defense, I don't I didn't have any expectations at all. So the fact that, you know, they were able to get a couple stops on the Packers and especially there uh, to sack Aaron Rodgers in that situation in the fourth quarter where you give your team a chance to go out there and, and tie the football game up, you know, is just perfect. That's that's what the guys are getting paid to do. So, um, you know, I. Uh, there was a couple ticky tack calls uh, that the pass interference against Kevon Seymour uh, was ridiculous in my opinion and, and set up the Packers for a touchdown in the very next play. Um, that was kind of a pivotal play in this, in this game, I think. Um, but that was just one of the side notes. I think I, you know, overall I'm, I'm, I didn't expect the Ravens to hang in there with the Packers at all. I thought it was going to be a two score, three score loss. I thought it was going to be a blow to be completely honest. Yeah, oh, yeah. Me too. Oh, yeah. They really oh, yeah. surprised me with the fact that they were in this game. And once again, I'm going to go back with how many injuries the Ravens have had throughout the course of this season, how they still have an eight and six record. It's, unreal. it's beyond me. Well, they have, it's, you know, they have 23 guys. Me. They have 23 guys on IR. And then plus seemingly every week, they have guys that have limited participation in practice and end up not playing. So. Damn, you know, I played like Lamar has. He basically didn't play the Browns. He hasn't he had a full week early. of practice, and I, you know, I don't know how long. I, I would say at least three weeks. And look, and he, he, here's my thing with that for the future. Um, I, I don't think he practiced today. I, I don't, I don't have any information on that or not. But in my opinion, he needs a full week of practice before he he plays again. Um, that's just my personal opinion on it. Because we've seen what his limited practice has done. He, he doesn't look sharp at all. Um, and, you know, you can say practice doesn't matter, whatever, uh, you know, how many reps does a, you know, a, a the Patriots would beg to differ. Need. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so that's that's just my opinion on it. I hope, you know, I, I, I hope that they decide to they make a decision earlier this week. Uh, but. We'll see what happens. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this team. It's, it's, it's not going to be easy. I mean, the game against the Bengals is, is kind of a winner go home sort of situation in my mind. I know all those teams are sort of sitting there in the same situation, uh, but you have to beat Cincinnati because they have the same record as you do. And, you know, if you want to and as have a right chance, now they have the tiebreaker over. Exactly. You, so. Exactly. If you want to have a chance to get back in the, back in the playoff spot, here's, here's your chance to do it. Yeah, I, I think you touched on yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, Dan pretty much touched everything. I mean, yeah, I all, mean, I, but all that's still... left to say is Aaron Rodgers. I mean. Oh, he's ridiculous. That oh, dude yeah. had some nice throws in that game. I mean. The one throw uh, across the middle. Uh, I, I, I can't. That that was that was disgusting. And it's only. And it's, saw... Yeah, it's the only. He's the only guy that I know that can make that type of throw. Only, <laughs> I don't even think Mahomes can make something he's like that. He's incredible. He's incredible. I think hey, can we stop talking about his toe. Like, how many yeah. times did they talk about his toe in the game? We, well, listen, no. I mean, he's got a messed up toe. <laughs> we understand he's got turf toe. It's broken. You know, it's yes. Would you like? It's to clearly not affecting him. That way. say, put your foot down. I think don't, I think Joe Buck has that. a foot fetish or something because he just kept bringing it up. I'm like, all right, we get it. It's he has a toe toe issue. We know. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> maybe Joe Buck does. I I don't have any comment on that, but I, you know, that's that's all I'll say. 
But no, yeah, you're totally right. Aaron Rodgers is just unbelievable. Just the throws yeah. he can make. And, and, and a lot of those throws, solid coverage, right? Like you're not going to be able to play coverage any better. And he just fits he throws the his there. receivers Same. open. It's crazy how great, how good he is. Like craziness. I don't know, man. But yeah, Aaron Rodgers played well. The, the, the two headed monster between, um, uh, what's Aaron Jones and, um, uh, his name is escaping me right Devontae now. Adams. Quad father, no quad father. Oh, um, uh, Corey Dillon. No, not Corey Dillon. Oh, is it Corey Dillon? AJ no. Dillon. AJ Dillon. Dillon. That's what it, Corey Dillon's another player. <laughs> he's a, he's, I like, he's I know an old it's running Dillon, back. but why am I thinking Corey Dillon? And of course, Devontae, of course, is just an absolute animal. Yeah, he's, he's um, unbelievable. I mean, we know offensively the Packers are going to be fine. Defensively, that defense has been playing better than the sum of their parts. But, I mean, this is the one time that they didn't play it. And they, the Packers really survived this game because the momentum mm-hmm. was, with, was with Baltimore at the end there. And yep. had Baltimore – I mean, it was the right – I mean, it was the right call for me to go for it. Terrible you know, play call, though. Again, terrible terrible play, play call. Play call. And also, especially uh, Huntley, unfortunately, didn't see, you know, you know, uh, Hollywood Brown was, Hollywood wide, was open. wide open. He missed yeah. him, was yeah. too focused on Andrews. And that play, I mean, the safety, immediately as soon as the ball was snapped, he ran, he beelined it straight to uh, help out straight with team. coverage on Mark Andrews, yep. which then left that, that spot open for uh, Brown. Of course, Huntley doesn't have enough experience to see that. Right. Um, it was the wrong play call. It was the right decision. I would have been fine with even if, you know, I, it's one of those situations where the analytics tells you this is the right call. You have more of a chance. Just go out and win the game. Right. But also, if they would have gone for the extra point and gone and played for overtime, that would have been fine also. Like, this is two This is two games, uh, not in a row, but this is the they've had those two games where it's, it's the end of the weeks. game yeah. against the Steelers, wasn't it, that they went for the two-point conversion and they didn't get it. Um, well, that one, well, that one hurts worse. Yeah, that one is, I mean, that's a divisional game too. So that one. Yeah. And that, and that, well, this one hurts me more because, you know, if you guys would have beaten the Packers, right. you know, the Cowboys would have been more, you know, thanks, thanks, but, you know, no thanks. <laughs> but, well, yeah, yeah, it was the I, wrong play call, unfortunately. But, I mean, I have no problem with the decision at all. You know, I, I, I said this after the game. It just seems like Greg Roman, for whatever reason, he can call a great game for 59 minutes. Um, and then when it comes down to that play call he has to make to win the game or put the game out of reach, he's not able to do it. I'm like, wh- why, why do we have him around? You know, why, why do we keep him around? He continuously shows that in late in big game situations or in big moment situations or in the playoffs, his play calling just kind of goes out the window. It's, it's inexplicable. So uh, that's just the frustrated fan in me that's seen this b- so many times before from Greg Roman. Just don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. I mean, please. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah. So yeah. my question to you, Dan, if Lamar isn't healthy, do you trust Tyler Huntley to have another big performance against Cincinnati, a division rival? Well, they're going to have to they're going to have to run the ball a little more effectively. Um, I mean, he threw it 40 times in this game. That's you're, you're not going to be able to get a young quarterback to, to do that. Um continuously now if they can if they can run the football more effectively with Latavius Murray then yeah I I think he has a pretty good shot at being effective but you know it 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 just all depends on where Lamar is um you know not he's probably not going to be at full strength this weekend I just I don't I still don't believe that you know I, I think that's a two maybe three week injury I mean I've never bruised my had a bone bruise before. Well, I mean, I, I, they're pretty the painful. Bone bruise is the same injury that Ezekiel Elliott has, and we see how compromised he still is. Right. You know, he looked a little better this week, but you know, it, it's not. It's well, where is the bone bruise? Where is it again? Ankle. Ankle. Injury, ankle. ankle yeah. Well, Zeke's is on his knee, so that is a little difference. But still, the ankle is still. I mean, especially for it's how a little shifty, part of his game. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's a big part because of, of how shifty he is. Who knows how much that bone bruise is affecting him? especially again with how he plays his game. So if, if I feel like, what, what, what would you say? What percentage type of Lamar, like would an 85% Lamar Jackson's be better than Tyler Huntley? Like what percentage would you put it at where you would put Tyler Huntley over Lamar Jackson? It's mm, a good question. Yeah. I, I'd say 85 is a good, a good bet. Um, 
I mean, personally, I'd love to see him 95%, Lamar 95% before he comes back. But that's just me kind of selfishly. Um, but yeah, I, I, look, we've seen what Huntley can do. We, we've seen how he can, how he plays in live action time. It's not like you have to go back to college or see what he does in practice now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, they, they, they have some more, um, they have some more against him. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I honestly think that Lamar won't be ready to go for Sunday. He, he at least he, he's not going to be a hundred percent. You know, he might be, he might be 80 to 85. And I, I think at that rate, you take your chances with Huntley to go out there and beat the Bengals, which I think he's more than capable of going like up against this defense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a matter of can the Ravens defense stop Jamar, Jamar Chase. Cause you know, last time he like had 200 yards receiving against him. So that's what I'm more concerned about more than anything yep. else. Dan, I think you said it perfectly. So once again, the Packers 31 and the Ravens 30. I'm Josh Kirby joined in the three-man booth by Dan Dembski and Carlos Martinez. It's three to nothing, the Rams over the Seahawks in the second quarter as we are recording this podcast. And it is 10 nothing, Washington over Philadelphia. We'll be right back with the Hurry Up Offense. Stay tuned. For sports fans living in condominium and homeowners associations, as well as business professionals, when you need a reserve study, PM Plus Reserves has been in business since 1990. Their studies are accurate and easy to understand. Check them out when your association needs a study, www.pmplusreserves.com. You can also contact them at 703-803-8436. Once again, www.pmplusreserves.com. Is it finally time to upgrade your home's interior? How about with an authentic farm table made locally from recycled barn wood? Shenandoah Primitives, based right here in Winchester, Virginia, makes farm tables, benches, tables, coffee tables, and a long list of other items for your home decorating needs. At Shenandoah Primitives, function and style are combined for great furniture that will last generations. If you are interested in combining the industrial look of metal with wood or considering something incredibly unique with a live edge, Shenandoah Primitives turns those ideas into reality. Thinking about a mirror, wine rack, or other accessories and peace for your home, Shenandoah Primitives can assist with that as well. As a local small business, Shenandoah Primitives is happy to work with each client for a custom design or schedule an appointment to come out and view current inventory. Local, high-quality, handmade items can be found at Shenandoah Primitives. Find us on Facebook and Instagram or visit us at www.shenandoahprimitives.com. Once again, that's www.shenandoahprimitives.com. All right, the three-man booth and the hurry-up offense. Gentlemen, are we ready? Let's go. One Saturday game with a Browns team getting moved to Monday due to COVID. The Colts and the Patriots. We think the Patriots were red hot in this football game. And Jonathan Taylor and the Colts said otherwise. What a game and what a finish by Jonathan Taylor to hand the Patriots a loss. And Jonathan Taylor, MVP candidate now. I think so. I think yeah, MVP I mean, is strong in the question. A lot better than Russell Wilson right now. <laughs> well, two to, that was a joke. Yeah, I mean, Russell Wilson, I don't <laughs> oh, know how far he'd be one. on the that long, was a good one. longhand list. <laughs> that was but, a good um, one. compliment to me. I feel honored today. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen often. You better you better take that and, and lock that away. But no, I'll say that. I didn't that, see that um, one coming. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it helps. I mean, Taylor had an unbelievable game. I mean, uh, Wentz only had three for 57 yards. So, you know, it shows you how dominant Jonathan Taylor was in this game. And yeah, I mean, two to three weeks ago, he was an MVP candidate. I think he's put his name right back in there again. Now it's, it's going to just going to be hard, in my opinion, for a running back to win the award. It just is. I mean, it is. And especially this day and age with all the great quarterbacks, but yeah, great game. And, uh, 
you know, Mac Jones, he had to do a little more in this game, and he he's uh, he he's still learning. He's still learning quarterback. That's that's kind of where he is right now. Well, the Patriots came out and said, you know, coming out of the bye week, they had a very bad week of practice, and they feel like that's what showed on the field that they just made really dumb mistakes. Um, but as, in terms for the Colts, I mean, this is the recipe for their you know recipe for success for them is take the ball out of Wentz's hands because he's going to lose you the game and give it to Jonathan Taylor, and Jonathan yep. Taylor will carry you to the promised land. Good win for the Colts. They're back in it, and the Patriots, I mean. They're still there. They're, they'll be fine. I mean, they, you, got, you got to focus on this game against the Bills, so. Yep. The Bills end their two-game losing streak by beating the Panthers 31-14 to with Stefan Diggs taking a fan's beer and pouring it everywhere. Uh, this game, I, I don't have much to say. I mean, this is a this was a must win game for the for the Bills. They had to come back and and prove that they could beat somebody because they they really have struggled uh, in yeah, in the last few weeks. On. Somebody, c- come on, <laughs> the Panthers. I mean, I mean, they are someone. They're <laughs> they're someone barely. They're someone, I guess. But I mean, they're still they're still an NFL franchise. All right, they're not barely. they're not the Giants. <laughs> they're they're not the Giants. All right, no, the Giants are barely a franchise. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. I mean Cam, Cam Newton just it's time for that boy to retire. I mean, yeah. he, it's it's just clear his body just can't do it anymore. He's just he's not making the correct throw. I mean, he made a screen pass through completely behind the receiver and like the guy was wide open. And we're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I think uh for the Bills, I guess it's a good, you know, like I said, they're fighting for their playoff lives, so they gotta keep winning and they gotta win everything. They, yep. They they have this big game against the Patriots coming up, so this is it. The Dolphins get a 500 with a win over the New York Jets. They have Skip. completely turned the, their season around. I, I don't, they might be in the, I'm not sure where the playoff picture stands as of right now, but maybe the Dolphins. I mean, they would have to win out. They yeah. would have to win out, but they're the 11th um, seed. So they, still have, they still have, they still have a game against the Patriots. They, they have a tough schedule coming up. So I don't yeah, they, think they're going to, I don't think they're going to do it. Yeah, it's it's too too much of a uh, tough tough road. But yeah, they've they've been they've been a nice comeback story, and I think uh, you know they were they were my dark horse pick, I believe, for a playoff team this year. So um, it would be nice to see them get in. But hey, uh, the playoffs the playoffs aren't for everyone. So uh, the Jets, I got nothing to say. They're the yeah. Jets, guys. Mediocre. Guys, what? Welcome to Detroit. Welcome to Detroit. Motor City Dan Campbell is making his mark. The second win of the season for the Lions, but... The, so, hold on. So, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get this straight. He wins his second game. And I'll beat him. It's a tough opponent. It was against the Cardinals. Okay? It fair, happens, though. <laughs> fair, fair play. Okay? And he's making his mark with two wins when you got... That must be the standard. Ten wins. That's the standard. Well, yeah, that, that's like Matt just LaFleur, what he said in his press conference. Who came into the NFC North, the same division as the Lions, and has won the NFC North three straight times. I'm, I'm just saying. He, uh, he made a very impact. Great speech. Great speech. Great speech. Yeah, speech. I mean, it seems like Dan Campbell's trying to make his mark in Detroit, and I mean, he's a hard, tough coach and I, he's I mean, crazy he's <laughs> absolutely but batshit crazy i know but yeah. i mean did you hear hold on real quick do you know what he does every morning at starbucks you know you, you know what he orders probably a two large a coffees latte? right two large coffees right with two shots each espresso in both coffees oh my man's that, insane he's okay. a madman dude no it's wonder no why wonder he's he has so, so much energy his heart is gonna fucking his heart's gonna freaking explode <laughs> It really, it really will. He needs to see a coffee doctor if those exist. He just needs to see a doctor. <laughs> so, but the Lions beating this Kyler Murray Cardinals team without DeAndre Hopkins, he's out for the rest of the season. Pretty crazy. Yeah, but it's it just it's been the season in general. We've had those games every week where the the, the team that shouldn't has no chance to win wins. So honestly, guys, this is kind yeah. of how the Cardinal seasons always go. They start yeah. out hot and this has just been under the Cliff Kingsbury era. They, they crumble the hot and then they taper off at the end of the season. It, it, like right now they're three and four in the past couple games. So 
Um, they uh, they got to turn uh, Cliff Kings, Kingsbury has got to turn this around because right now they're the you know Arizona's got Dallas coming up here soon, yeah. and that game is going to be very important in terms of playoff seating because if they lose, the Rams could easily overtake them. You know, for the division and the 49ers are, I and mean, we're going to touch on the 49ers. The 49ers are looking pretty hot right now, too. So, they're knocking on the door, I mean, the, the Cardinals need to figure it out. But, I mean, good win, good win for Detroit. I mean, Jared Goff is what seven and one against the Cardinals, including yep. his years in LA. So, yep, I mean, they <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury's never beaten Jared Goff. So, good for Jared. What a terrible name. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Yeah, but let's not crown the the lines. I, oh, I, I'm not think, crowning them. I mean, they're still the no Kirby but, is. I mean, hey, the Kirby's hey, like, hey, guess what? What am I? They don't have the number them? one pick anymore. What am I crowning them? I didn't say anything about they're going to the Super Bowl. I just said Dan Campbell is trying to leave his mark on this. What franchise. mark? Two wins is a mark in a season? No, he's when trying had Jim to leave Caldwell, a positive his last season impact. Go nine, and seven. nine and seven, and they let Jim Caldwell Whatever. walk. That, 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 that's the Lions. The Lions are a poverty franchise, okay? They are. They are literally the definition of a poverty franchise. Worst I mean, they don't have the same team. scandal as the other poverty franchise, but still. <laughs> Yeah, their culture's right, not the, as bad. Uh, uh, all right, let, let's move on since Dan doesn't agree with my take there. but I don't agree either. To, whatever, whatever. Um, Look at defensive. Smile, Ooh. come on. Big mad, big mad, big mad. Come on, smile, it's Christmas. Santa Happy Claus holidays. is coming to town. All okay, right, all right, all right. Let's get back on track. Daryl Bevel, 0-1 as interim head coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're still on their losing ways. I mean, bye bye, Urban. Bye bye, who, Urban. Hey, who are who, what game are we talking about? The Jags, the Texans, and the, Texans. the Jags, the poop okay. bowl. Can we please skip, skip. that? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I got it. Goodbye, say. Urban Meyer. Good riddance. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I mean, it kind of already did or kick you. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kick you. <laughs> and we might skip this game as well because Mike Lennon sucks and the Cowboys just annihilated. Yeah, we're not skipping it. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Have at it, Carlos. Yep. Have at it. Okay. I mean, there's not much to say. I mean, offensively, we still kind of look. Uh, I mean, CD Lamb looked really bad. Um, our running game looked uh, started getting going. Um, but Dak is clearly in a slump. Defensively, we are – Amazing. We look really good defensively. If our offense can, you know, we have three weeks to get our offense up to speed here, which I feel like we will. We will. I feel like we will. Um, but um, Trey, I mean, digs, digs, 10 interceptions. If he gets two more picks, he gets the Cowboys all or season record for most interceptions. And to think that this team only had 10 interceptions um last season and now they got 22 this season i mean this team has completely changed uh under or this defense has completely changed under the guidance of one dan quinn our lord and savior on the defensive side he has um, a great first name by the way yeah yeah, yeah i bet he does dan doesn't he <laughs> um but yeah um in terms of the cowboys i mean hey we're the second seed right now <laughs> oh man both his teams I picked uh, good this year. I picked good this year. All it's right. going to be a good year for, for me. The Steelers over the Titans, 19 to 13. Big win for the Steelers. They yeah, the Titans won. Yeah, Titans were hella sloppy in this game. They just turnovers, penalties. They got lucky getting that one spot towards the end of the game, and then they reviewed it uh, much to their chagrin. But yeah, the Titans. You know they didn't they didn't play like they're they were a nine and five team. Um, the Steelers, you could tell they had something to play for in this game, and you know it, it wasn't pretty. Ben Roethlisberger did did not play well, um, but the Steelers are the Steelers are still getting the job done when they they're they're winning games they have to win. So um, credit much credit to their defense for how well they played against Ryan Tannehill, and. Um, you know, obviously, without Derrick Henry, the the Titans have really seen the effects in a lot of these games. Yeah, for the Titans, it's it's just been it's been hard going because again, Derrick Henry was so big and pivotal in their offense to he lose him. Offense. Yeah, uh, it has you you got to put it on Ryan Tannehill's shoulders, and clearly Ryan Tannehill isn't the guy who's going to necessarily. I mean, he's a serviceable quarterback, 
Um, but he's not the guy who's gonna, he's not a Tom Brady. He's not an Aaron Rodgers, right. Patrick Mahomes type quarterback. He's mid tier quarterback. Um, it also doesn't help that Julio Jones just can't stay healthy. Like I feel, I, I think the days of him being able to play a full season are done. You know, I mean, I, th- I think the trade was worth it because you only gave up a second round pick be- and for the potential of what could have been with Julio Jones, but it just hasn't worked out because he just can't stay healthy and play. And then on right. top of that, they're missing uh, AJ Brown. It's AJ Brown, right? Yeah. AJ Brown. I AJ mean, Brown. he's, he's hurt too. So, I mean, it's just injuries are starting to hurt this offense. And, but I mean, I guess good for the Steelers. I mean, big Ben finally does a QB sneak. I don't understand why he hasn't been doing QB sneaks ever in his career when he's got the build for it, but you know, like not big, the good, not the last win. few years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big win, big win for the uh, for the Steelers. Terrible loss for the Titans, and it's it really hampers on their chances of getting that bye week that they so desperately need. Yeah, um, they need to get that just one get, seed just to get a little more healthy. Yeah. yeah, just to get a little more healthier and to give Derrick Henry even more time to get back because he can't come back in the playoffs, but yeah. he needs more time. All right. The Bengals over the Broncos, 15 to 10. Uh, obviously seeing Teddy Bridgewater getting carted off, taking his face mask off. That did not look good to see. Hopefully yeah. Teddy is all right in the Bengals, eight and six after this win. Same thing with Teddy Bridgewater. He it w- wasn't like a hit to the, like it wasn't like a player hit him in the head. He just, just kind of knocked himself awkwardly. out. Yeah. Like just like landing straight on the field with, you know, and knocking himself out. I mean, just nuts that we had two injuries like two that freak injuries yeah uh, and and nuts that it was both afc west teams that mm-hmm. it happened to um so hopefully teddy's doing well um and getting better um I, I haven't really seen any like updates on it i'm pretty sure there's updates out there i just haven't seen them well they um, said but, uh they did say last night he was he was uh out of the hospital i heard ah. But good, now good. he's he just entered the NFL the NFL's concussion protocol. So obviously, I mean, it's clearly oh. concussion. I mean, the dude oh, was yeah. knocked out. Oh yeah. Um, I, so we'll so see yeah, what comes out of that. It. Yeah. So I mean, not much to say here. I mean, the Bengals looked a little off. I I'll say. I mean, it was it was a very sloppy, weird game. I mean, but the Bengals are on. They're rolling still. That role is going to come to a complete stop when they meet Tyler Huntley. No, um, <laughs> the Huntley trade. <laughs> yeah, I think you summed it up, Carlos. I mean, the the Broncos are a team that was, you know, just trying to stay at 500, and the Bengals have something to prove, and they have to prove that they are a playoff team. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the Bengals proved that in this game. They they were very sloppy and not 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 at their best, but. A win's a win. The 49ers whomping the Falcons 31 to 13. Mm. Yeah, 49ers yeah. are starting to look look uh, look a little dangerous. They're starting to look dangerous. Jimmy G with 235 yards. That was a good performance by him. Very good. Yeah, that that's that sums it up. I mean, and also they they also got the running game going really for the first time in quite a while. Uh mm-hmm. Wilson uh, Jeff Wilson had an insane game. So um, that definitely helped the 49ers and made it easier for Jimmy Garoppolo to, to really go off as uh, Wilson rushed for 110 yards. All right. And the Falcons suck. The yeah. Falcons suck. Uh, there's nothing to say about the Falcons. They're terrible. Kyle Pitts has not become the guy that everybody thought he was going to be. But yeah. I think he just needs more time to kind of get an NFL because he's he looks a little small. So, I mean, I think he just needs – he needs to use this off season coming up to really build his body to become that big tight end threat that everybody thinks he's going to be. Yep. Totally agree. This next game made history on Sunday night football, Tom Brady for the first time in 15 years, getting mm. shut out by three field goals to a saints team without their head coach in COVID protocols with Dennis Allen replacing Sean Payton for this game. My goodness, what a terrible game. Three <laughs> field goals. Three field goals. And I mean, yeah, that the game Bucks have awful. nothing. 
That game was awful. Yeah. Uh, I don't Tom know what Brady it is. broke his Surface tablet. I'm sure he's going to get billed for that. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm sure he won't mind. And his wife makes ten trillion dollars a year, and he makes a lot less than that. But that's fine. That makes oh, no. less, at least football salary wise. But I'm pretty right. sure it's, uh, with all the endorsements, endorsements he has, I think he's yeah, good. He's, it's it's pretty even. Um, yeah. It, for whatever reason, the the regular season New Orleans Saints are Tom Brady's kryptonite. Um, and they have been since he came to Tampa Bay. I mean, they've they've beaten him every time. So it's it's he's it's pretty crazy. Years, yeah. Yep, that's right. So, I don't know what it is. Uh, the Saints, you know, they must study very hard when they play Tom Brady because they they look like a different team defensively, especially uh, mm-hmm. when whenever the the Bucks come to town. So, um, the big thing with this in this game was was losing Chris Godwin. Obviously, um, mm. yeah, they lost the Mike year. Evans. Uh, you know, and Chris Godwin Leonard after Fournette. the season. Leonard Fournette looks like he's going to IR with that hamstring injury. So they're yeah, going to the lose him for a while. That's why the they Bucks signed are... Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, woo, Wh- whoop de doo. Uh, <laughs> I I still don't understand that, but that's just me. Um, I'm not I'm not a hater. Um, no. Um, not just a tad. <laughs> I'm a little salty, but no. Um, yeah, I, I I think things are starting to unravel a bit for the Bucks. I mean, they're losing all these players on offense. Uh, that defense that defense played about as well as you could ask them to play. I mean, you give up nine points in the game, and you say. You ask a team, do you, you know, from the in the past, do you think you win this game? Of course, most teams are going to say yes. So, um, I think I've blabbed too much about this game. But well, credit you, credit the Saints, credit the Saints for coming out and doing what they had to do, which was on offense, just getting field goal range. Um, you know, that's kind of what Taysom Hill's going to give you. <laughs> you know, he's not going to go nothing, out and light the world on fire. Basically, Taysom Hill is a garbage quarterback. He he can't throw the ball at all. He can't at all. I, I'm going to disagree with, with that. He had a couple di- um, drop-ins to Callaway that looked pretty Do you want nice. him to be the quarterback of your team? Uh, 14 that's incompletions. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Saying, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. No, 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 I'm no, no. saying Taysom, Taysom I saw Hill him is throw. A garbage quarterback. He's a garbage no, quarterback. No, you can't say that. He's Carlos. a garbage quarterback. I can say that. He's a garbage Gosh. quarterback. He's bad at playing Did you quarterback. not see some of his throws? I feel it's like not, he but, had some but pretty deep passes. Making. It's not just about, oh, any, any quarterback can throw a pretty throw. So can right. freaking Joe Fart or whatever. Uh, Johnny Manziel could throw a pretty ball. It doesn't mean yeah. he was a good quarterback. He's a tr- Johnny Manziel was a trash quarterback. So is Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill is a trash quarterback. He's and not his contract. Win anything. Don't and his sit contract there and is try ridiculous. and defend this man, Kirby. Because he, I'm not time. defending him. You know, I'm just saying he's be there the were some bright team, spots in his gameplay last night. Oh, I'm sorry, night. 0 and 17. There were there were some bright spots in his no, game. No, there were no play. bright spots. No, there weren't. They so yeah, you're gonna you're gonna say seven. right now, Carlos. No, 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 no. You're no, no, gonna no, no, say right no, no, now no, 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 that no, 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 he doesn't have a couple do this, good throws. You're not gonna sit there and have a bright spot, and he doesn't have a single touchdown pass to save his life in this game. It was three field goals. They injured a bunch of the Bucks. That's why that game ended that way. They didn't win this game because of Taysom Hill. Don't sit there and give me that crap. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Okay, don't give me that crap. He's he had a beautiful throw. No, that no, 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 Piss off with that stuff, okay? Taysom Hill is trash, and the fact that you're defending him shows why Washington has a mediocre fan base. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not defending Move him. Move on. We're done with this, I'm okay? not defending Taysom him. Boy, Taysom Hill is trash. Move on. I'm Hurry not on. defending Let's him. Go. I'm just saying I like some of the All passes he had All in down. this Come Sunday on. night football Let's game. Go. I. I'm not defending him, but yeah, you You're know. Defending him. Now let's move on. I'm not defending him. Kirby. I'm just saying he had a Kirby. couple good passes Kirby. to Callaway. I like. He sucks. He's bad. He's bad. He's not good. He's really bad. You're literally the only person who's not even the Saints fans are defending him and yep. doing this. Oh, there were bright spots. He can pass the ball. Anybody can throw a pretty ball here and there. That is okay? true, but the rest of his gameplay. I could practice. He's I could trash. practice for a week. I could practice for a week and go out behind a decent offensive line and probably complete one pass. I probably could. We should we should make that happen if that's possible. <laughs> Do they have like a dream camp sort of thing? Anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's move on the last two games in the hurry up offense. The Raiders Daniel Carlson with a game winning field goal over the Browns 16 to 14 in what a terrible game that I stayed up the entire night to watch the Vikings beat you the Bears. You made some bad decisions this week with some of these games staying yeah. up for the Bucks I didn't and even for the watch Raiders. This. I, I watched the ending cuz I was like all right it looks like it's a little close let me see what happens. Yeah. It was I mean 
the Browns completely missing everybody with COVID. Pretty Baker much. Baker in their head Baker, coach. It was. It was just bad. It was just. Mm-hmm. Bad. Bad. Yeah, I have I have nothing to say. I mean, yeah, Raiders... honestly, honestly, we could probably skip these next two games because I don't even have a lot to say about Minnesota, Minnesota, uh, Chicago. Aside from Kirk Cousins is just god awful. All, all I'm gonna say. No, Kirk Cousins throws the ball. Oh my god! Nice. Here we go. <laughs> shut up. So does Dwayne Haskins. But no. Um. No, shut up, Dan. <laughs> you can bring him into this. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Got him. Got him. The... <laughs> There's no reason this game should have been close. The Raiders should have won this game by two. Running scores, away. You know, that they, they had a terrible game. Um, and they're going up against a bunch of scrubs. Let's let's be honest. Nick Mullins, you know, <laughs> come on. Come on. What are we what are we even talking about? He throws so, a pretty ball also, according to Kirby. <laughs> Every quarterback That's what makes a great quarterback. If you throw a pretty ball, yeah, man, you're a good spiral. You're, hey, you're, you're, a, good you're, going in, you're a Hall of Famer in Kirby's book. You're a Hall of Famer. Taysom Hill, uh, Washington, 2022. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's make it happen. Make Washington great again. Taysom Hill. Bring that BYU product over. Trade a first, second, and third round pick next year. Let's do Pay it. that man $64 million every year. Let's go. That, that was the hurry up offense. What to look out for comes your way next. Hey there, this is Mark Francis of Icon Real Estate. If you have any real estate needs in the Winchester surrounding area, including West Virginia, give me a call. I've got extensive experience, been in the business for almost 20 years, and would love to help you out. Track me down at Icon Real Estate, iconsells.com, or even give me a call, 540 247 one five two seven again icon sells i c o n s e l l s dot com and i would love to chat with you and help you out give me a call all right there are two games left that are on as we are recording that we will not cover it's washington versus philadelphia in an nfc east division matchup and the seahawks facing the rams at sofi stadium but for the time being, gentlemen, what are we looking out for next week? Oh, you know, just a little game on Sunday night called Dallas Washington, where, you know, at least the way things are going right now, it looks like Washington might pull off this win. That, of course, remember, we're recording while the game is being played. So Washington probably lost here, and Philip Philly won, and Dallas is celebrating an NFC East title. But join us next week <laughs> for the celebration of a lifetime. The Dallas Cowboys one of the NFC East celebration will be live on this podcast next oh. week. Guarantee it. And you will hey, see. Hey. I'm going to have a party here, boys. I'm hey. going to have a party here. Hey, I'm hype. Washington is shipping their benches to Jerry World. Let's go. Let's go. I, mean, I don't see why they would have to because our heated benches actually work. But you know. well, Washington shipped them to Philly. They're shipping them to Dallas and to New York as well. You know, the nice thing is the Washington They made a must... deal with some company to make that happen. Yeah, the Washington because they're stooges like and they like to there. copy us because, like, we did yeah. it because you guys have broken heated benches. They're like, oh, it worked for the Cowboys. You know what? Let's use it and see if it works for us. The Washington, Washington. The, the, the Washington players like going on the road because they don't have sewage falling on their heads while they're trying to, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice, Dan. Nice, Dan. Uh, to get, to get yeah, prepared. so that's what but, I'm looking forward to. You know what? Um, and I, Christmas. Pats and Bills is definitely the game to watch because I mean it not only has huge playoff implications but it has AFC East division as far as that divisional championship playoff and or uh, not playoff but divisional implications as well so that game and then also the Ravens and Bengals as well I want to see uh, you know like again another huge playoff matchup you got a team that's in it right now the Bengals and a team on the outside the Ravens uh, Ravens win and they're in so I think it's going to be tough uh, but who knows Regard- plenty of things have happened. Regardless of the matchup, I'm looking out for Christmas Day football in the All Madden documentary. I'm really excited oh, yeah. to see that. Yeah, it looks good. Looks yeah. looks very good. I'm not gonna watch it, but you know, I, I thought Dan was gonna hate on me since he hates no. Madden. No, I the game now is terrible. Yeah, the game, the game sucks now. now. The, the game, game is terrible. terrible. Man, They've I taken mean, so much out of it. That's a whole. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother podcast for another day. I think the last Madden I bought was 19, so that kind of shows you where I am. Uh, the last one I bought was 21, the one with Lamar on it. Wow. Yeah. I, I should have bought that one. Just Actually, for... I lied. I didn't buy that one. Did I buy that one? I did buy that one. 
I either got that on Game Pass or I bought it, but that's that that's neither here nor there. Hey, if you got twenty one, let's play. I'll beat y'all. No, I'm <laughs> I'm hard pass. I don't play. I don't we play. We should do Madden a live anymore. stream. That would be fun. Just a podcast Madden live stream. It's so <laughs> different. Us there would playing. Be, we would have other. to. Uh, we would have. I have to, Madden thirteen. No. <laughs> Madden thirteen on three six. I have Madden 07, oh, debatably one of the greatest Maddens of all oh, time. That is that is that is the greatest Madden of all time. Yep. Yep, Madden 07 is the Mad, best. Uh, well, yeah, Madden podcast, uh, that, that would be very interesting to do one of those, but that is a uh, different podcast for a you different time. Something. But without further ado, as we wrap things up, it, it's the holiday season from myself, Dan Thank Dembski, you. and Carlos Martinez of the Kirby on Sports Podcast. We wish you all a safe and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, boys. Christmas is this Saturday. Yeah, I'm excited to open up some presents and watch some football and have a great time. And don't forget eating. Eating is another important thing. On yeah, Christmas. Yeah, Celebrating the greatest yeah. Christmas gift that I'm going to get of all time, right. which is another Dallas victory over Washington. Da, 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 na, 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 na. Oh, he is hyper now. He was tired at the beginning, but he's ready yeah. to go now. Yeah. Well, Kirby woke it. me up with that argument about Taysom Hill being. A, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Tell. For Christmas, I'm going to get Kirby a beautiful pass from Taysom Hill. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Taysom yeah, Hill throws cost. the ball nice, but still, I mean. Uh, that's all no, I was trying to. No, we're not rehashing this. We're not rehashing <laughs> this. Okay, we already went on a long rant on that. Okay, uh, your point. My point was proven. I was vindicated. Yeah, let's. Uh, you know, let's just thank all of our listeners and as as well as our supporters for all of their hard work this past year. And and uh, you know, without our listeners, we we wouldn't be able to put Dude. out the product we put out. You know what I mean? And we also wouldn't have any sponsors either. <laughs> you know the the. The sponsors came from listeners, so thank you. That's, that's what I'll say. Yeah, what's that? Thank you, fans. Thank you so much. You guys are great. I hope you guys have a safe and happy holiday. I appreciate you, Dan. I appreciate you, Carlos, for the weapon, Dan Depsky, the Swiss Army knife, Carlos Martinez. I am Josh Kirby. Check out the Kirby on Sports podcast. Kirby on sports.com. You can find us on all social media platforms as well. Thanks to Patrick Van Kemper and Trumbull Insurance for all your insurance needs. Contact Patrick at 540 532 For our sponsors, Regroup Building Services, PM Plus Reserves, Shenandoah Primitives, and Mark Francis with Icon Real Estate. This has been another edition of the Kirby on Sports podcast. Happy holidays, folks. We appreciate your support. Until the next time you hear us, always remember to create greatness. So long and peace out.